Welcome to the Teton County Museum Online Academy. Uh, this program is part of our Enhancing Classroom Education program here at the Tipton County Museum. I'm Barry Foster, director here at the Tipton County Museum Veterans Memorial and Nature Center in Covington, Tennessee. I'm also an artist and an art teacher, and we have a lot of videos on our online academy. A lot of art videos, art history videos, some science, genealogy, nature. We also have tours of our gardens and of our nature trail. So please be sure to check us out. Today I'm going to be presenting Leonardo da Vinci, Renaissance Man. He was an artist, a scientist, an architect, an inventor. Some people believe that he's the smartest man that ever walked the earth. Born in a section of Italy called Anchiano in the year 1452. His parents were not married. His father was wealthy. He was an attorney and a notary, and his name was Ser Piero. And his mother was Caterina. She was a peasant woman, but she was very, very beautiful. Now, when he was very young, his parents both married other people, and they went on to have families. When he was about three or so, he went from living with his mother to living with his father. Both of them had more children after he was born, and so they were kind of busy with their other children, and so he kind of felt lonely in his childhood. He had no formal education, but a local priest saw what was going on, and so he spent a lot of time with Leonardo when he was very young. He taught Leonardo to read, to write, and quite a bit about math. In his childhood, he was alone, and he spent a lot of time in nature, observing, and he loved nature. Now, the medieval period is also called the Middle Ages or the Dark Ages and they lasted from about 500 to 1500 AD in Europe. Most people could not read or write. They were very, very poor. The church held most of the power. And we have another program that occurred during this time period, our Hildegard of Bingen program, so be sure to check that out too. Now, the Renaissance period, the title Renaissance means rebirth coming out of dark, and that's what the title of this program is, Renaissance Man, about Leonardo, because he was coming out of the dark ages, and he was leading that, that journey. People back then believed life should be enjoyable. Art and education became very important. Lorenzo de Medici and Galileo Galilei are other programs we have regarding this period. And in this photo here, this is a painting that Leonardo did called Madonna of the Rocks. And it's a very, very famous painting. Now, when Leonardo was about 14, his father took his drawings to Andrea del Verrocchio because his father had noticed Leonardo had some talent with art. And so Verrocchio agreed. And so Leonardo went to live with Verrocchio and became one of his apprentices. And he actually had several young men living with him doing that sort of thing. And Verrocchio was one of the two major studios at that time in Florence. He was a very wise man, very talented. Uh, Verrocchio was a painter, a sculptor, and a goldsmith, among other things, and he was the official sculptor of the Medici family. Leonardo's apprenticeship, during that time, he learned metalworking, leather arts, carpentry, drawing, painting, and sculpting. And according to Verrocchio, Leonardo became a better artist than he was. In this painting, Leonardo's on the right in the green tunic, and Verrocchio is standing next to him. And you can see the other apprentices working in the studio. 
And there's a statue there of David, which is very famous. Leonardo stayed with Verrocchio till he was about 26 years old. Normally, the young men would leave about the age of 19 or 20, and they would go off and have a nice life, make a nice living. But the two men got along very, very well, and so he stayed longer than most people. Here's a closer picture of the statue of David. Now, David's head was modeled after Leonardo's head, and it was commissioned by the Medici family for a garden in their palace. Leonardo became a very, very famous artist in his lifetime. He used the new oil paints. Prior to that, paints were tempera. And I'm an artist, like I said, and all paint is made up of two parts. One part is the pigment, which gives it its color, and the other part is the binder. And so prior to the oil paints, the binder was egg, and that was the tempera paints that all the artists used. But Leonardo started using the oil paints, and the oil became the binder, and it was most likely either walnut oil or linseed oil. He also used a sfumato effect, and sfumato means smoke in Italian. And if you look at this painting here, look at the background. You'll see it looks kind of misty and smoky. That was something very new for the time, and it's beautiful. Leonardo also incorporated triangles, pyramids, and the golden ratio in his paintings, and I'll show you that in a second. But he painted the Mona Lisa, which is the most famous painting in the world. And here's a picture of it here. And when I was in sixth grade, I saw this painting. It's hanging in Paris, France, in the Louvre, which is probably the most famous museum in the world. And it's behind glass. And it's not very large, but it was beautiful. So I was very fortunate to see it. Here are the triangles and the pyramids I was talking about. And this shows up in the composition. And the composition, a composition in a painting is basically an arrangement of the objects in the painting, the objects or the people in the painting. And the reason why Leonardo liked this is because it created a sense of depth and it provides a strong foundation, and it implies the Holy Trinity and ascension into heaven. Back then, the popes were very powerful, and you always tried to please the church. And the Holy Trinity is Jesus, God, and the Holy Spirit. And if you go to any one of the Christian churches, you've probably heard that term. Here's the Mona Lisa painting again, showing a triangle but it's also showing the golden ratio. And Leonardo figured out the golden ratio. And it's something he said was aesthetically pleasing. And what that means is it's pleasing to the eye. And it can be found throughout your body. And the ratio is one to 0.618 mathematically. Leonardo was a strong believer that art, nature, science and math were all interrelated. And you can see when you look inside her face, that little triangle there against the big triangle and that circle, and what it does is it leads your eye in there. And so that's the golden ratio. Here's another famous painting that Leonardo painted. It was commissioned by his patron Ludovico and his patron basically is the man who hired him. And it was Ludovico's lady friend, and it's titled Lady with Ermine. And Ludovico said it was so lifelike that nature herself was jealous. It's a beautiful painting. Leonardo was also a scientist. He dissected dead animals and people to observe the body. What does that mean? Well. There were, once the animal or the person was dead, he cut open the bodies to see what was inside. He created many drawings of muscles, tendons, and the human skeleton. 
also skeletons of animals. And most of the science books back then were written in Latin. And he didn't know Latin, he only spoke Italian. So he actually taught himself Latin so he could read those books and learn more about science. He had a lot of sketchbooks and he drew a lot, a lot of humans, a lot of machinery, and he drew a lot of animals. And in this painting, this picture here, you can see he's got kitty cats in all different poses. He loved animals so much that he decided to become a vegetarian. He never ate meat. He would also often go to the markets where the vendors were selling caged birds. And he would buy those birds just to set them free. He was a very nice man and a lot of people really loved him. He studied human proportions. No one had ever really done that before. And he discovered that every man at three years old is half his height. He also drew the Vitruvian man where it related human proportions to geometry. Leonardo was an architect. He drew designs for buildings, canals, bridges, and cities. He designed cities with wider streets and streets with cleaning systems to eliminate waste. Now back then, most of the buildings, most of the cities were built in the medieval times where the streets were narrow and the cities had a big wall built around them. Well, back then they were having plagues. Their plagues were different than the plague we have today or the, the pandemic that we have today. And their plagues were carried by fleas and rats. And back then people didn't have bathrooms the way we do today. And they didn't have garbage pickup or anything like that. They didn't even have dumps. What they did is they threw everything out in the street. Well, that was what was causing the plagues. And he figured that out. And so he designed new cities with wider streets that even had a waste cleaning system. And he also uh, designed buildings where the living quarters were upstairs and your place of business was downstairs. And if you look in this picture that he drew, the building on the top, on the left, you can see like a wheel. And that's part of that whole system of cleaning the streets. He also designed movable barricades in case of attack because that was a real threat back then. Italy was not a unified country and there was always a threat of being invaded by other Italian um, states or even France. And so these barricades could be moved as needed. He was an inventor. He's probably the most famous inventor of all time. He designed many military weapons, most of which did not get built in, in his lifetime because the technology wasn't around yet. But these are all in his notebooks, the crossbow, the tank, the repeating rifle, the helicopter, the submarine, the hang glider, and the parachute. And in this drawing here, you can see it's a large crossbow. Look at the man standing, the operating, uh, the person operating who operates it. Look how powerful that is. That's incredible. He also designed a mechanical bat and a flying machine, and he was the first one to come up with the design for the bicycle. Now here's his drawing for the tank that he drew in the year 1487. This tank was capable of moving in any direction. It was equipped with many cannons and it could be operated by three or four people. Here's a cutout view of it and you can see inside there where the cannons would be placed and you can see the wheels on it and it's actually quite large. But the first tanks didn't look quite like that, but they were used in World War I around the year 1915. He also designed the helicopter. Now his helicopter looks a little different than the ones we see today. His relied on air screw dynamics and the helicopter was made from reed, linen, and wire. You can see in this picture, 
his drawing of it, but the dynamics didn't work, so his version never got built. But the first helicopters, the modern day helicopters, because of him, we have him to thank for that, they came out in time for World War II. Leonardo never married, and he suffered a stroke at age 66, and he died on May 12, 1519 in Amboise, France, shortly after his 67th birthday, and he died in the arms of King Francois I, for whom he was working. Everybody loved Leonardo, and he's actually buried there in France instead of Italy. Thank you for watching this. Be sure to check out all our other fun educational videos on the Tipton County Museum Online Academy. And we hope to see you at the Tipton County Museum. Yeah.